All right. Hello, everyone. Well, I'm recording this on my laptop. I may or may not be able to edit it or see what happens, but I'm going to try to do a joint upload video. I've got basically a, a five more days here where I've got good access and I can upload multiple videos. So I'm going to try to upload to both Rumble and to YouTube for those days. Once I get moved, I'm not going to be able to do that. And these videos may be a little bit shorter only because I am trying to deal with it's been raining pretty much all day today. Some point they're predicting a major thunderstorm coming through here with tornadoes. So um, we'll see whether or not I can upload or not. But I'm inside my tent. I don't have any choice because uh, it's raining outside. And it's not real hard right now. I'm kind of in a mini, in a mini band that's uh, quieted down, which allows me to get this video out quickly. And as soon as it starts raining again, the pitter-patter on the roof will drown me out again. All right. For those of you that are uh, staying here on YouTube, um, I will try to get occasional videos out, but I'm not going to get as many as I used to. Uh, I'm going to focus on Rumble. Uh, YouTube has basically restricted me to the point where I am losing uh, membership. I am losing uh, minutes that are viewed. They're basically making it impossible for people to find me. Um, this channel is, I'm doing a lot of work when if I go over to Rumble, uh, I don't have to do any of that. So I won't get rid of what's here. You can go back and look at my previous vid videos and watch those. Um, and I will probably still upload here maybe once a week, twice a week maybe, uh, to YouTube. But for Rumble, uh, thank you for coming over here, since this is going to be both on both channels. Um, it's a little bit of a different learning curve. We're going to have to both learn how to use it together. One of the things that I'm having trouble with is when you leave me comments on YouTube, YouTube gives me a little indication that says that I have a comment there when I'm in YouTube. I don't get that on Rumble right now. I get an email, and then I got to go over there and find it, see if I can find the. There should be a place that I can just click on comments and just go down and, like I do on YouTube and just answer comments. But YouTube's been having trouble with notifying me too. Sometimes I don't get notified at all. So as I trust it, I got to go back through and see what's there. Um, I can't seem to post anything but videos on Rumble. And there may be a way to do pictures too, but right now it's only only videos. So to do pictures, I've got to be on Telegram. Because Telegram is more like uh, Twitter, so I can do comments, pictures, and short videos. So anyhow, what we have coming up, we're seeing all this bad stuff happening. Do your best to isolate yourself from it. But they're being in your face. We can control you and you can't do anything about it. That's what all this you know, balloon overhead stuff is, the train derailments, the fires at factories, killing off our chicken coops making it impossible to get fertilizer to, to farm, buying up all the farmland. We're going to all be at the mercy of this one world government until we're raptured. But then everybody else is going to be stuck with it, and they won't be able to get away from it. They're being in your face about it now, and there's nothing you can do. And it doesn't matter what we think we can do in a normal, honest system. That's gone away. They will eventually take your guns away. Even though it's in our Constitution. They're, have a burning party and burn the Constitution here eventually. They will probably have sex education for multiple genders starting in elementary school showing them how to use various devices, if that's what they're into. 
whatever they think that they can do to destroy any representation of God on this planet, it's on their agenda. If it's not there yet, it will be. And I still, since this is going to be a dual video, I can't say much more than that. But don't, don't be concerned. The world is not going to get the wrath of God because he doesn't dish out wrath. He's going to get the wrath of the universe that was set up to work around God. And when you say, God, we want to do it on our own, leave me alone. He says, fine, it's all yours. This universe wasn't designed that way, but you know better. There you go. So we're going to look a little bit in Revelation 9 and see some of the things that are coming to the world that thinks they can do it without God. You know, we've all been young mentally and think we can do it on our own. There's, it's a built-in thing for teenagers anyway, uh, when you're growing up, to want to get out of the nest, to want to leave the home and go out and make it on your own. That's kind of built into us. It's hard for parents to deal with kids who turn on them. But that's the mentality of you know, growing up in this world. God's had to deal with it with his children, no matter whether they're Two or 92. God has had to deal with it for years. So when parents finally see that, you kind of get a feeling of what God has been going through. When you have children that don't call. My older son doesn't respond to calls, texts, anything. My younger son is trying to make it with his handicap. That's about all I want to say about it now. But he's he's getting better at it. And when he gets back, I'm going to work with him and we're going to we're going to get through this. But what we're doing to, you know, comply with what the world wants, do your best to stay away from this stuff. If you're directly involved because you've got kids in school, look at the alternatives. This idea that you've got to get to the top of this big money pile and you're going to have to work two jobs and your wife's going to have to work two jobs just so you can get this brand new house to keep up with your neighbors. Stop it. That's what's causing all this. This greed and the pride of having pride of ownership, as they call it. That's what's causing this. It was a simpler time when I was growing up. One person worked, the other person raised the children. Now, the problem is, and it started back then because they started tearing down the family, is that the husband didn't help the wife. And eventually the wife gets frustrated and stops supporting the husband. And then this integral partnership starts falling apart. Just because you work a day job doesn't mean you don't have responsibilities at home. You should be sharing the chores. Now, obviously, if you put in an eight-hour day, which is not a full day, you've done your work. But then you've got 24 hours a day. What are you going to do with the rest? Sit around, drink beer, and watch football? Well, your wife brings you your beer and your sandwich and you just stay in your chair. Does that seem fair? It's not. But that's become a big norm in this world. And that's not how it was meant to be. If you're working so much and you're so exhausted when you come home from your work, just to make ends meet, that's one thing. But if the ends that you're trying to meet or to have a bigger house, more, you know, two cars, brand new cars. I've been there. And I'm divorced. I didn't learn in time to correct the problem. 
I've had lots of time to think about it. But if you burn, burn those bridges, there's no going back. I'd love to reverse everything and go back, but I can't. I've tried. I didn't want to do what God wanted me to do. And that's what happens. If you fight God, you suffer. God has issues in dealing with us. He, he, you know, Jesus weep when he came into Jerusalem. He can be sad watching us fail repeatedly because we won't do what he wants and what he wants us to do. Don't fall into that. Stay out of the world. Don't do what the world's doing. Don't be fooled. They tell you, you've got to have this new whatever. This new exercise program, this new diet program, this new whatever. The new cars that are coming out. you got to have one. you got to have one of these new electric cars. Well, if you have to work extra hours to get to it, no. Then you're spending too much time away from your family. You should be, if you're in a relationship and have a family, they should be your first priority. Your job is to satisfy them. And if they're saying, well, all my friends have $250 tennis shoes, we'll see if you can get adopted while you're over there. If not, we don't do things that way here. We don't put value in material things like they do. Are they Christians? They're probably not going to. You're not going to see them after this life. They're going to be dead and then eventually they're going to be in the fiery pit. Is that the kind of relationship you want? Find good Christian people to be around. Okay, well, let's take a look at Revelation 9. That was just a little bit of my rant. Um, staying neutral on the things I shouldn't say. I'm going to try to do one of these once a week uh, that has to do with posting on Rumble and YouTube. But that's all I'm going to do on YouTube is once a week. And I'm not sure what day yet. So you do want to click the bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I do that. Uh, I'm no longer going to put uh, that information up front because you won't be on YouTube very much and I won't be there either. Okay. Revelation 9.1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth, and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Now, I don't know what a bottomless pit is, but it sounds very ominous. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. We know about where this is in our timeline. Jesus even talked about this. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Stinging locusts. Sounds delightful. And I was commanded that they should, they were, and, and it was commanded that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Locusts normally eat. Uh, living things, grass and that, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God on their foreheads. Stinging locusts designed to sting men. And to them it was given that they should not kill, but that they should torment five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion, when it strikes it's a man, 90% of the scorpions in the world aren't deadly. They just hurt. You know, it's the worst bee sting you can get. And in those days, men shall seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. You know, who holds the key to life and death now is Jesus. And he's not going to let that key go to waste. 
and the shapes of these locusts were like unto horses prepared for battle, and on their heads, as it were, like uh, crowns like gold, and their faces like the faces of men. It's hard to know what this looks like. People have painted these as all kinds of things. Let your imagination go wild. The bottom line is, is they won't bother Christians. There's a hint for the post-trib, post-rapture uh, people, the left-behind people. Come to know Christ very quickly after you realize your mistake, because it's not going to be pleasant. And they had hair as hair of women, and their teeth were like teeth of lions. These are giving various attributes to these, but I really can't tell you what that is. We can make up ideas, but unless somebody's had a vision where they've seen this, we don't really know. And they had breastplates and, as it were, breath, breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots of many horses running into battle. And they had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and the power was to hurt men for five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. This is the biggest bad guy you can imagine, whose name in Hebrew tongue is abandoned, but in the Greek tongue, it's Apollyon. So when he says he has two names, we're dealing with the two languages. And you've probably heard uh, both, but the bottom line is it doesn't matter. He's big and bad. One woe is past. We've got three woes. Um, and behold, there comes two more woes uh, more after. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice of the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had a trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound uh, in the river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed and were prepared for an hour, a day, and a month, and a year to stay the third part of men, to slay the third part of men. A third of mankind is killed. We've seen this in the trumpets, haven't we? Okay, and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, and I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horses in the vision, and I, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire, and I don't know what the word is, jackanth and brimstone. I used to know how to say that, but I don't remember today. And the heads of the horses were the heads of lions, and out of their Mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. But these three was a third of the men killed. By these three, the third of the men were killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which each each issued out of their mouths. And the power uh, in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like into serpent, were like under serpents. And I'm reading pure King James and I'm struggling. I normally read out of the new King James. So we'll, I'll remedy that next section next time I read this by getting a newer update to this software here. For their power uh, in their mouth and in the tails, and the tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, and neither can see, walk, or hear. And neither can see, walk, or hear. These idols are not living, and yet they're being worshipped. Neither repented they of their murderers, and their sorceries, and their fornication, nor of their thefts. After all this stuff, people wanting to die, they still wouldn't give up on their sins. Now, more people are going to be saved during this tribulation time than the ever ever before. I don't know how long I've been talking. I've got to figure out how to get the clock to show up on this. All right, I'll keep working on this. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here because I want to keep it 
clean for YouTube. I know I'm going to say words I shouldn't say eventually if I do this long enough, because I'm going to get back to speaking normally. I love it when I can talk to people directly and I don't have to filter my voice. Uh, I go off really fast because it's just I've been hindering myself. I sit there and I think over every word so that I don't say the wrong the wrong thing. Okay, let me wrap this up. I'm going to get it edited uh, if it needs to be. I don't know if I'm going to put the full editing on this. Um, I have the ability on my laptop to use my uh, Sony Vegas, which is a full video editor, and do pretty much anything I want. Uh, but it takes time. And to do this on a daily basis, which I've been doing, the phone has made it very nice. I had a very simple app that could just put things together, and I might try to find one of those for here. But in the meantime, I hope everybody has a blessed day. Don't let any of this stuff happen, happening around us scare you. Don't be concerned about it. When they finally get full-fledged on this stuff, we won't be here. And there's far worse stuff coming, coming from the devil than can possibly come from man. And all these things are to get people to wake up, take a look at their life, take a look at God and decide finally, are you going to accept God and get away from all this stuff? Or are you going to go to hell and suffer greatly while you do it? There's two choices. Spend eternity in heaven or spend eternity in hell. People don't want to give up. They think they can beat the system because that's what Satan thinks, that he can beat the system. But he doesn't know the Bible. He, he knows it about as well as our earthly scholars do that's why we have five thousand different religious groups on the world because they don't know how to read this stuff i can't read it unless the spirit interprets it for me sometimes he does sometimes he doesn't sometimes i'm not supposed to give the answer sometimes jesus would tell a parable and then tell his disciples what it meant sometimes he didn't If you stay around long enough, he will explain everything. If you stay repentant long enough, he'll explain everything. But we go in and out so much, it's difficult. Get out there. Be part of the world for Jesus. Get into one of these revival churches. They're amazing to be a part of. You can look back and say that you had so much fun there. It's going on. And I know the Bible doesn't talk about revival. There is, hasn't been one revival discussed in the Bible, technically. This was not the means that God wanted everybody to know about. You just It's just going to happen. He wants you to know what it's like to be with him and what it's like not to be with him. That's what this world is about. Revivals will come and go. They will last for a little while and then they will go away. People will forget. It's sad, but God has to deal with it, not us. Let the Spirit of God flow through you and let him give you the joy of what's on this planet. Get out and enjoy what's around you. All right. Till we meet in the clouds, God bless.